No one really talks about the size of a fat cell. A fat cell basically is just seen as a constant for a lot of individuals. Well, in the case when copper levels are low, researchers discovered that fat cells actually double in size, not in a good way. And primarily because how the fat cells utilize or store fuel becomes altered. It alters certain enzymes which result in the body's inability for lipolysis. Lipolysis. And you'll understand why in a second. But first, let's look at the pictures right here. It kind of explains a lot of it visually. And it's a little technical, so please bear with me, but it's better just to look at it. All right, you see the section there, F, G, and H. All right, basically what we're looking at is that ATP 7A. It's diminishing something, as we talked about before, semi-carboxylate sensitive amino oxidase, otherwise we'll refer to as SSAO through the rest of the study. I'll repeat it a couple of times just as a refresher. But if you look at that, look at the size of the cells. They're practically doubled in size. Look at all the information across the board. Copper is required to maintain adequate levels of this SSAO, which is responsible in turn for how the cells utilize fat and sugars for fuel. So let's get right into the research itself. It's a little technical. And also, too, as a side note, we're not talking about how much copper is required or what exactly constitutes a deficiency state. All we're really discussing is the incredible importance copper has in regard to this particular outcome. And it is incredibly vital. So let us begin. Low copper levels linked to fatter fat cells. That's the title of the public release. In studies of mouse cells, researchers found that low levels of cellular copper appear to make fat cells fatter by altering how cells process their main metabolic fuels, such as fat and sugar. We're going to go to the abstract real fast. And again, it's a little technical, but I want to go to the abstract because it gives you an idea of how many functions copper actually serves in the body, including the lipolysis. All right, so let us begin. Copper is required for numerous cellular functions. That loss of copper homeostasis is incompatible with life. Copper-dependent enzymes critically contribute to mitochondria respiration, cellular defense against oxygen radicals, angiogenesis, wound healing, biosynthesis of neuromodulators, and many other processes. Increasing evidence points to a tight functional link between copper homeostasis and lipid metabolism, as the research here. Copper accumulation in liver alters the tissues of triglyceride and cholesterol, and reciprocally, excess fat decreases the hepatic copper content. Human patients with non-alcoholic fatty liver disease and dyslipidemia, uh, dys, dyslipidemia show copper deficiency. Interesting. Whereas rats, and because it's not a model, with a copper deficient diet develop insulin resistance and steatosis. Recent studies also suggest that copper modulates processing of chloromicrons in the intestine and have a signaling role in the regulation of, uh, I have a hard time lipolysis today, lipolysis. All right, basically it's how the body breaks down fats and so on and so forth. So that's just to give you an idea of copper's role. All right, now we're gonna go into the public release real fast because it puts it better in plain terminology. But more importantly, how did the researchers actually come to this, uh, I don't wanna say conclusion or outcome in, in their study itself? To test whether the cells a copper consumption affected SSAO's function. Once again, semi-carboxide sensitive amino oxidase. Not that that's important, but it actually is. Yang limited copper availability to adipocyte maturation. She found that the lack of copper did not keep the cells from developing into mature fat cells. Here's the catch. But unexpectedly, copper deprived cells grew to more than twice the size of their healthy counterparts and contained more fatty molecules called lipids than cells developing under copper adequate conditions. Bring your attention back to that first picture I showed you in the beginning. To quote, this test showed that copper was important to healthy development and metabolism of the adipocytes. To determine whether the loss of copper dependent SSAO activity was responsible for the change in size and fat accumulation by the copper deprived cells, Yang engineered cells that lack the enzyme entirely using genetic editing and monitored development. When chemically induced become mature fat cells, 
These lab-grown mouse cells looked remarkably similar to cells deprived of copper in the earlier experiments. They grew to about twice the normal size of cells and contained more lipid once again. So basically what we're doing here is establishing the outcome, uh, whether you want to look at a correlation or a causal, that copper plays a role in how the body utilizes fat for fuel in the cells. When copper is deficient, it interferes with this enzyme called SSAO, just drawing the path to this outcome. And then the fat cells basically, for whatever reason, expand to about double their size. Trying to draw the argument that copper or adequate copper levels are vital for proper energy utilization and metabolism. To conclude with the research, again, the DOI citation will be there and I want you to follow it. Read the full study if you like. It is filled with tremendous amounts of good information in regard to the research that these researchers have obviously done in regard to copper and what we're doing, fat cells. In summary, quoting the research, we have established the role of copper homeostasis in adipocyte morphology and function and identified SSAO, we talked about before, as a regulator of adipocyte mass and metabolism. We show that adipocytes require proper copper balance and compartmentalization to maintain their size and energy balance. In differentiated adipocytes, copper transfer into the secretory, secretory, secretory uh, pathway is regulated by the copper transporter, ATPA, a, sorry, ATP7A and ATP7A supplies copper to SSAO. Remember the picture in the beginning? when you saw the ATP7A and basically uh, interfering or downregulating SSAO resulting in boom, bigger fat cells, that was part of it, which is highly upregulated in differentiated adipocytes. Quoting the research, our data suggests a novel mechanistic role of SSAO in selection of metabolic fuels and fat storage. Understanding the role of copper and SSAO in obesity will help to develop new tools and treatment strategies to reduce obesity and complications such as diabetes and fatty liver. So what we're trying to take away from this particular study here in regard to the researcher's outcome is in individuals that may have uh, difficult to treat or monitor or basically uh, improve uh, weight issues or obesity issues, one potential element that could be holding them back is the possibility of a copper deficiency. Again, we're not here to argue what is an optimal level of copper or a deficient level of copper. All we're here to show, according to this research, is that copper plays a huge role and in future research as well needs to be looked at in much greater depth. Who would have thought something so simple but plays a tremendous amount of metabolic uh, roles in uh, an individual's biology, plays such an incredible role too in regard to metabolic health. Again, this is Ralph Church Channel. I hope you find this information of use. A little technical, I apologize, but that we had to go through the research and establish how they came to the particular conclusion or outcome. Again, look forward to seeing you all again in seven days. DOI citation will be linked. You'll find the, the other channels. There'll be the uh, link to the full study itself as well. And thank you very much for listening. Hope you find this information useful. Look forward to seeing you all again next week. Catch you then. Bye.